I smell that and I smell Tom Ka soup. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you dig up your front yard lawn for food gardens? The neighbors come by for dinner. When Ben McConnell and Steph Hengel started growing organic food for themselves, they responded to a neighborly need at their Bolton Food Forest Saturday farm stand. I'd always been an occasional gardener. Uh, it, was, it was a hobby. It was really the discovery of permaculture for me that sparked my interest in gardening. Permaculture is designing a system for life, for ecological life. Um, and there are many elements to it, but to me, the, the, some of the most important elements are capturing and storing energy, especially water here in Central Texas. Very precious resource where we can go sometimes months without water. So that's one reason for the berms, is to be able to capture and store that water and all the swales that are behind the berms to slow down that water. I'm on a slope that goes at about three degrees downhill toward um, South First, toward a, b the Bolden Creek area. And being able to capture and store that water is very important. So for me, it's about following the contours and the shapes of the land itself, which slopes downward. It has its own contours that I follow. And that's based on the idea that I'm not going to work against nature, I'm gonna work with it. I broke ground in September 2014. It was very hot, uh, I was very sweaty, uh, and the ground was very hard. In fact, the ground was, one of the reasons why the ground was so hard is because where I'm situated in Bolden Creek, we're largely on top of a rock face like you would see in the Green Belt in Austin. So much rock that exists just a few inches below grade. I ended up digging out about 30 truckloads of, of rock just to be able to create the foundation for the berms, which go anywhere from half a foot to a foot below grade. And at the bottom of all those berms are a lot of twigs and, and branches and logs just to provide you know, decayed nutrients for all the plants that live inside the berm. Plus, worms love decaying branches and, and wood as well. Soil needs a continuous supply of, of water and air um, just to be able to keep generating life inside the soil. So every few months I'll stick a, a, a 30 inch long broad fork into the berms and it digs down about a foot and I'll pull back a little bit on that broad fork and that'll create air pockets inside the soil. And then I'll fill those pockets that are, you know, about a half inch thick with water. So the water can seep down in there along with the air. Not to mention all of the stuff that's in the swales, because I do chop and drop uh, trimming and pruning of all of the plants and the trees that are in the food forest. So the, the swales themselves are just rife with stuff that's decaying from all that chopping and dropping. And I'll put those atop the berm as well. And then in a food forest, offshoot of permaculture. I have all the trees. I've got 18 different fruit trees here. I have two large pecan trees. I have two large oak trees. And all the leaves as they fall down and then you know provide fertility for the soil. Um, that's another component to me of how all that ties together and becomes a system that is largely governed by trees, but you know works together symbiotically uh, among everything that's being grown. This is vermiculture composting. So, if you lift off this bin, you'll see all of these red wigglers in here. And they're producing worm casings. And there's all sorts of food here. This used to be food of leftover cucumbers and vegetables and lettuces. And it's mixed in with shredded cardboard and paper. And what will happen is this will eventually become garden food. And those worms that are in there will migrate upward into the next box where there's eggs and leftover garden stuff stored, as well as the shredded compost or the shredded paper and the shredded cardboard. And they'll eventually devour all of this and this will become garden food as well. And then all of these boxes will rotate up and down based on where the worms are. One of the principles of permaculture is create no waste. So I took that to heart. And when I began the project, 
there was a cedar fence that was enclosing a patio for the house. So rather than throwing all of that beautifully weathered seven-year-old wood away, as you know, some people might be want to do, to me, uh, there's real beauty in that wood. And so I wanted to reclaim and reuse all of that wood, which, which I've done in, in building uh, several chairs. I built a couple of tables, work tables, uh, work benches for all the potting work that I do and then uh, some of the planter boxes as well. Gradually, Ben framed the patio with stone. We do want some edges in our lives. We want some privacy. We want sometimes to be just observers and be contemplative about what's before us and think. But at the same time, just like in a forest, it's accessible from multiple points, but it also has its own sense of enclosure. <laughs> When Ben and Steph added Indian runner ducks to the family, they built onto the stonework for a raccoon-proof home. After Trudy and Mr. and Mrs. Quackenbush frolic in their pool, Ben nourishes the garden with its fertilizer-enriched water. To give their dogs front yard access, Ben built an open slat fence and its entrance gate arbor. At the same time, I want the many neighbors in the Bolden Creek area to be able to you know, take in the garden, share it with their children or their family members, or you know, it happens a lot, people just bringing their friends by and, and showing them the garden and, and having easy access to be able to look at it and learn from it. One way to meet your neighbors, a great way to meet your neighbors is to build a garden in your front yard. Part of the reason why the, the berms exist the way that they do is for aesthetic reasons. So being in a front yard garden here, I wanted to be conscious of of making it, making it pretty, making it beautiful. We discovered that there was a lot more food here than we could possibly eat and wanted to share that. And we've shared it with a lot of the neighbors. And you get a lot of questions about, are you going to be selling any of this? So like farmers everywhere, Ben and Steph are up early on Saturdays to prep the Bolden Food Forest's ultimately local farm stand. Everything sells out fast including homemade grapefruit marmalade from their young trees. Neighbors also pick up planting and cooking tips. Steph, a nurse practitioner, packs nutrition into every bundle. She takes a very holistic approach to medicine, so good health comes from good eating, eating naturally grown foods. I think people are, are also really interested in understanding the process, especially in, in sharing that process with their kids. I'll see parents all the time saying, look, that's a pomegranate, or that's a pepper and that's where they come from. They grow on these small bushes or that's where the trees produce cherries or apples. So for them it's an educational process and being able to share that with them is really gratifying. Look at that. <laughs> that's beautiful. In November 2016, Ben and Steph held their last farm stand in Austin. Breaking ground once again on a 150 acre spread near Temple, they'll be able to supply even more local food to tasteful restaurants. Bye.